Welcome to St. Anne's. We thank you for joining us today for the Eucharist celebration. To those here present and those watching from the safety of their homes, today's Mass intentions are for the rest of Maria Armida Felix, Everardo Silva, and Joe Alcaraz. We ask you to please be respect respectful of those around you and maintain a social distance of six feet. Remember to leave your mask on for the whole mass. Restaurants will be open, but limit visits to emergency only. Two persons are allowed inside at a time. Please also remember not to let your children go alone. An adult must accompany them. Thank you again for your cooperation. Please stand and join in singing number 487 in your hymnal. This is towards the back of your missalat, hymnal number 487, Tree of Life, number 487. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with you all. And with your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. My sisters and brothers, today we are celebrating the 11th Sunday in ordinary time. Let's now acknowledge our sins and failures. And so as to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
God, strength of those who hope in you. Graciously hear our pleas, since without your mortal frailty can do nothing. Grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet is to kill. Thou says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high land lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it. It shall put forth branches, bear fruit, and become a, maj become a majestic cedar, Birds of every kind shall, shall dwell beneath it, every wind thing in the shades of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, withered up the green, green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. shall flourish like the palm tree like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow they are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God Lord it is good shall bear fruit even in old age vigorous and sturdy shall they be declaring how just is the Lord my rock in whom there is no wrong Lord it is good to give thanks A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we will rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense according to his deed in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Come to him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord, the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And when the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, to what shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed that, when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. To you, Lord Jesus Christ. My sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, the first emperor of France, Napoleon Bonaparte, was in fact deadly ambitious to rule the whole world. And he did so in less than a decade. He changed the world of ruling half of Europe. However, my friends, Despite his military power and army, mighty military power and army, at one point in his life he was trapped and imprisoned. And then he was exiled to the island of St. Helena. It was then he was in his late 40s. When he was counting his last days of his life, one of the reporters interviewed him, and one of the questions was, 
who do you think the greatest king that the world would never ever forget napoleon whispered quietly many men in the past have been loved intensely socrates by his disciples julius caesar by his legionaries napoleon me by my disciples by my soldiers but these men belong irrevocably to the past now nobody remembers but not the jesus of nazareth is still being loved honored and adored by millions and millions across the globe the kingdom jesus founded was on love without swords and without military power and army the only weapon jesus used was love and my friends julius caesar is gone socrates is gone napoleon is gone hitler is gone but the kingdom of god marches forward marches on and on precisely because the kingdom of god is not a physical place it's not a political power it is a spiritual realm it is the heavenly kingdom it is a divine force founded on the solid foundation of love peace joy mercy fraternity justice and equality which are the values of the kingdom of god which are the gospel values and my friends the kingdom of heaven is a crucial message for us on this 11th sunday in ordinary time the readings talk about the kingdom of god and my friend someone asked me if i was if i was born catholic i said yes i am a catholic in my fourth generation because my great grandfather was converted from hinduism to catholicism and i am a catholic because the seed of faith was sown in my heart as a child as an infant when i was baptized i was given a name beautiful name joseph and so the seed of faith was sown in my heart already by the virtue of the sacrament of baptism and i nurtured it and by god's grace i'm able to be here I'm able to be a priest it's all by god's plan i'm here because i nurtured the seed of faith sown in my heart long back and my friends that's true for all of us by virtue of baptism the seed of faith has been sown in all of our hearts and in all of our children's hearts and minds now sometimes families some fathers or some mothers might think why did my child have to baptize when he is an infant let him choose his religion and my friends the truth is that you choose the best school for your child best medicine best hospital best everything best of everything but in terms of faith why don't we keep them on the right track and that's how my friends infant baptism is something very important for all of us as catholics because jesus tells us unless one is born of spirit and water he will not enter into the kingdom of god and my sisters and brothers kingdom of god is something very special because a kingdom does imply a king and jesus is our king there is no other king and jesus himself says my kingdom is not of this world that's a rule of god that's a divine force that the divine divine rule that's how the kingdom of god goes on and on and we are here 2021 here as catholics celebrating the wonderful most holy eucharistic sacrifice and this has to be passed on generation after generation because god is at work it is not we are doing everything it is god is doing everything and my friends the focal point of jesus's preaching or proclamation was the kingdom of heaven 
when Jesus began his public ministry, he proclaimed loud and clear, the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. And in his sermon on the mount, in one of his beatitudes, Jesus hits the nail on the head, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. What is the kingdom of heaven? What is the kingdom of God? Where is the kingdom of God? St. Paul gives us the answer when he tries to explain the kingdom of God, the meaning of the kingdom of God. He says, kingdom of God is not in food and drink, but peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. And so my sisters and brothers, wherever we find the real joy, love, peace, joy, mercy, fraternity, equality, justice, that's the kingdom of God. That's where we find the kingdom of God. And Jesus would uh, emphatically affirm, kingdom of God is not something that could be observed with things. Look here it is, look there it is. It is among you. Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI hits the nail on the head. What's the kingdom of God? Jesus is the kingdom of God. And our soul is the essential location of the kingdom of God because God wants to come and reside in our hearts. God wants to come and dwell in our hearts. That's how we nurture our faith. God is at work. And my sisters and brothers, this is the day that we have to remind ourselves of our own baptism. By virtue of the baptism, the sacrament of baptism, we became a new creation. We got a new birth. We became children of God. We became part of the kingdom of heaven. That's a joy. To be part of the kingdom of God here on earth is the greatest joy. And my friends, yet identifying that we are the part of the kingdom of God is a challenge for all of us. Because sometimes the seed of faith was bad was sown when we were baptized. Sometimes it is nurtured. Sometimes it is ignored. Sometimes when we become grown up, we have our own doubts about our faith and we don't nurture it. And so my sisters and brothers, the kingdom of God is in our midst, in our families, in our neighborhood, in our workplace, in our society. Only thing, we fail to recognize God is at work. That's called the question that we need to ask ourselves today. Do I really nurture the precious seeds of my faith and grow in my daily life? We have numberless opportunities, my friends, every day to grow and to nurture, to grow the seed of faith. And Jesus tells us two parables today, two seed parables. Both parables are centered on the image of the seed. Both parables focus on the inevitability of the arrival of the kingdom of God as an image of seed. The seed is there, sown already, planted. It grows secretly, but it cannot be secretive forever. It is flourishing, it is springing up, it comes up. And so my sisters and brothers, let us today Recall to ourselves and see, examine, make a kind of examination of conscience. How do I nurture the seeds of faith in my life, in my daily life, in my family? For example, my friends, when we sow a seed of faith of hope, faith and hope in our families, in our neighbors, we find there is the kingdom of God. And my sisters and brothers, there are numerous opportunities every day in our life that we can become the powerful, the living members of the kingdom of God. And so let us, during this Holy Mass, pray from our hearts that we may always sow the seed of faith, seed of hope, seed of courage. For instance, my friends, an encouraging word to someone who is grieving, a friendly gesture to someone who is in trouble. A welcoming smile to someone who is alone. 
a little rays of hope to those around us that's where we see the kingdom of god and so my sisters and brothers it is that when the eucharist when we receive we become the soldiers of christ and we become we put on the mind of jesus when we go forth we should reflect that powerful message the powerful tool from the eucharistic lord into our lives and that's how we become consciously aware of ourselves of our calling that we are the living members of the kingdom of god and so kingdom of god is not in heaven is not in another state it is here in our midst let us always strive to recognize the kingdom of god in our lives in our hearts in our families in our parish community praise to be the holy name of jesus amen please stand may we now profess our faith i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible i believe in one lord jesus christ the only begotten son of god born of the father before all ages god from god light from light true god from true god begotten not made consubstantial with the father through him all things are made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was incarnate of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified under pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end i believe in the holy spirit the lord the giver of life who proceeds from the father and the son who by the father and the son is adored and glorified who has spoken through the prophets i believe in one holy catholic and apostolic church i confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and i look forward to the resurrection of the dead the life of the world to come amen my sisters and brothers the lord knows our every need and urges us to pray to him with confidence we now therefore join with all god's people in coming before his throne that as the church continues to foster the growth of the kingdom of god on earth her members may grow in unity and holiness we pray to the lord lord hear our prayers that efforts to promote and preserve peace between the nations may be marked by perseverance and reliance on god we pray to the lord lord hear our prayers that those who travel from one nation to another seeking a home may find guidance encouragement and feel welcome we pray to the lord lord hear our prayers that every member of our parish family may respond generously to sharing their god-given gifts and talents for the work of god's kingdom we pray to the lord for all our loved ones who have passed away especially maria armida felix everardo silva and joe alcaraz that they may share in the joy of god's banquet we pray to the lord lord hear our prayers father we rejoice to be a sons and daughters as we seek the fulfillment of our needs we long for the growth of your kingdom bring us safely to our eternal home we ask this through christ our lord amen please join in singing number 530 in your hymnal number 530 god of day and god of darkness number 530 
God of day and God of darkness, now we stand before the night. As the shadows stretch and deepen, come and make our darkness bright. All creation still is groaning for the dawning of your might. When the sun of peace and justice fills the earth with radiant light. Still the nations curse the darkness, still the rich oppress the poor. Still the earth is bruised and broken by the ones who still want more. Come and wake us from our sleeping so our hearts cannot ignore your people lost and broken, all your children at our door. Show us Christ in one another, make us servants strong and true, shining your love of justice, so we do what you would do. Let us call all people home. Friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament, grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have a being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you, Lord, as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your holy name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. 
For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving it thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving it thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate, Lord, the memorial of the saving passion of His Son, His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to His second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with their elect, especially the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Anne, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, Kevin our Bishop, and his brother bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. My sisters and brothers, may we now call God our Father, 
In the words our Savior taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who sit in apostles, peace I leave you. My peace I give you, look not in our sins, but in the faith of a church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us all safe for eternal life. Amen. Seven zero four in your hymnal number seven zero four. Love one another number seven zero four.
sisters and brothers may we now do the act of spiritual communion for those unable to receive holy communion my Jesus I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
The announcements for this weekend. Today we will be having our project collection. As a reminder, those collections are to go toward any repair needed or future projects. Thank you for your cooperation. Registrations for First Communion for children and confirmation for youth adults have begun. Please take home a bulletin and review it online because it, is, it contains all information to registration your children. Show, uh, sh should you have any questions, please contact the Faith Formation Office. Remember that you can ask one of our members of Jóvenes para Cristo to, for a PSA envelope. There, there you can pledge or make a payment. As a reminder, next Sunday, June 20, we will be, it will be our last day that we will live stream. This Mass and all other are welcome to join us in person. We thank you for joining us today. For more information, please take a home a copy of the bulletin. Thank you very much. We would like to remind everyone that the previous dispensation placed by Bishop Kevin Van regarding being excused from attending Mass during the pandemic has ended and all the faithful must begin attending Mass every Sunday. Because of this, next Sunday, June 20th, will be the last day that we will live stream our Masses on our Facebook page. If you are ill, you are welcome to watch the live stream Mass from Christ Cathedral. We are also called to invite our family and friends that haven't been coming to Mass. Please let them know that when we come to Mass, we are safe and respectful. We hope to see many more faces soon. Let us pray. As this reception of your Holy Communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your Church through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God, and have a blessed week, everyone. Thank you, Father. As we are sent forth, please join in singing number 676 in your hymnal, number 676, City of God. Tears be turned into dancing